So I've had this 24 volt system set up in our tiny house off grid in the desert here for close to a year, maybe around 10 months or so at this point. So this week I want to make some major upgrades to the system for one, so we'll be doing that in this video. I also want to reflect a little bit on some of the things that I've learned, some of the mistakes that I've made with this setup. There have definitely been a couple of them, and then just review how the battery and how the charge controller inverter have been working for us. Just to recap before we get started, this is a 24 volt, 3000 watt, grow watt, all in one charge controller inverter. It has a 3000 watt inverter built in as well as an MPPT charge controller. I have that tied into our breaker box, just a standard AC breaker box just up here. And then it is all based on a 24 volt, 200 amp hour lithium LifePo 4 battery by Ampere Time. The company actually changed their name recently to Lee Time. And in this video, we will be adding a second battery here, which will give us over 10,000 watt hours of usable power. So far, this battery has worked well. It's been perfect, actually. We really don't have any complaints about it to this point. You know, it's not quite enough capacity to get us through those stretches of cloudy days that we sometimes get. So doubling the capacity will definitely help us with that. I think that that's going to pretty much solve all of our problems. But that all being said, I mean, no complaints about the battery so far. This company does have a five-year warranty on their batteries. They seem to be pretty well built. I'm not some kind of expert. I'm not going to go in here and start ripping apart this battery and taking it apart and dismantling it and really studying what's inside of it. All that I can reflect on is how it's worked for us while we're actively using it out here in the desert. And it seems like it's been, it's been working pretty well. It does have a low temperature cutoff in there. We found that out because we left this property to go to Florida for a couple of months this past winter for the holidays, and it definitely dropped below freezing inside this tiny house quite a few times. When we got back, the battery had actually shut itself off so that it could not take charge in those cold temperatures and so that it could not discharge as well in those cold temperatures. And it kind of scared me at first because I thought it was dead, but really all I needed to do was just grab a 24 volt trickle charger. I hooked it up to one of our solar power stations, our little portable power packs that we have, and within a couple hours this thing was back up and running and it's been working great ever since. So I think that that low temperature cutoff actually kind of saved this battery. If it didn't have that, it probably would have got damaged while we were away. So thank goodness it is, uh, you know, it saved itself and it's working great. I really have no complaints about this so far and I'm looking forward to getting the second one installed. I do have a link as well that you guys can follow in the description below and a promo code. The promo code is ELEMENTS. If you enter that in on the Lead Time website, you can get 3% off anything in their store. They do a whole bunch of different batteries. It's not just the 24 volt systems. They have 12 volt as well and a whole bunch of different stuff on their site. So would definitely recommend checking them out. Let's get to uh, upgrading this system now. It's a relatively simple 24 volt system. I did run a 250 amp fuse between the battery and the charge controller inverter. I also put these two bus bars in here just because in the future I might want to step down using a 24 to 12 volt step down converter uh, and then have a, an, a 12 volt system with a small fuse panel in case we want to install maybe like an RV furnace in here at some point in the future or some other 12 volt appliance. And then I just have a cutoff switch between the battery and the inverter as well. Uh, relatively straightforward. The PV comes in from the outside. Uh, just have that hooked up and running through the wall. And then I also have an input with a shore power 15 amp adapter so that we can plug in our little generator, our little gas generator, if for some reason we uh, don't have any solar and, and need to use that to get things powered up in here. I love that they give these instruction packs here and these manuals. They show the settings that in a few moments, once I get this hooked up, I'm going to plug into the grow lot. Alright, let's get this party started. Shouldn't be too difficult. I will be connecting these two batteries in parallel. I'm going to start by cutting off the connection between this battery and the inverter. And then I'm just going to connect positive to positive, negative to negative. I'm going to move this negative connector to here so that then my positive on one terminal is going into the inverter and then my negative on the other battery's terminal is going into the inverter. Pretty straightforward.
lead time provides all the bolts that you need with the washers and everything. You can actually buy these cables pre-cut. I'm not sure where these ones came from, but I didn't even have to make them. I just had them from something in the past. Maybe a van build or something. I'm not sure. I'll put links in the description below uh, to everything that I use in this build, including the grow watt and obviously the lead time batteries and any other wiring or bus bars, cutoff switches, fuses. 224 volt, 200 amp hour batteries connected in parallel. Let's fire it up. Alright, so before moving on to the next step of this upgrade process, I'm going to be doubling the solar input into this system. Looking forward to doing that, but first, I just want to make sure that my settings are okay with the grow watts. I did go through and set user settings for all the charging parameters and everything when I did this install initially, but I just want to make sure that nothing changed when everything reset. Lead time does provide you with a very comprehensive manual here, just a product manual with all of the charging parameters that you need for these 24 volt batteries. So to disable the annoying beeping noise, you just hold the down button and the enter button. I think I mentioned that last time I made a video about this system. It can get really annoying, and I, I think there's probably a way to turn off the alarms, and I'm going to try to do that today as well. I know that Shannon got woken up in the middle of the night a couple of times when she was in here last fall because the alarms would just go off with low voltage or whatever it may be, and... That could be pretty annoying. Number five here is I have it set to user settings. There is a lithium setting, but from what I can gather, it doesn't work if you do not have a BMS that communicates directly with the grow watt. So I'm just going to set it to user settings. My BMS is basically just whatever is in these batteries. It's relatively simple. So with the user settings, I can go in and I can actually manually plug in all of the charging parameters that are listed in my product manual from lead time. I already did that, so I probably shouldn't have to change anything, but I just want to make sure that it's all all good. Number 10 is the number of the batteries that I have coming in. It's set to two, and I don't know if it did that automatically. I don't remember setting that last time, so it might have just automatically realized that I now have two batteries in parallel. I believe number 15 is the alarm, the annoying beeps and alarms, so I'm going to try to turn that off. It's on on right now. Let's go B off, OF, perfect. Hopefully that turns off all of the uh, crazy sounds in the middle of the night. Alright, so this is our float charging 28.8. 28.8, so that looks good. That's what I set it to. Everything looks good. At the moment we have 540 watts coming in from the solar panels outside. Let's go double that. Alright, let's get this solar upgraded. I think the biggest mistake that I made with this 24 volt system actually has nothing to do with the grow watt settings. I seem to have mostly got those right, I think. The battery has been fine, like I said. The biggest problem has been with the solar input. When I set this up initially, I was trying to keep it underneath the maximum open circuit voltage for the system. I put three of these panels in series and ran them into the grow watt inverter. That is 330 watts per panel, so for a total of 990 watts going in. But the problem with that is that these panels have an open circuit voltage of about 46 volts each, which put me very close to 150 volts coming in. I thought that I was keeping it just under, but in hindsight, I actually was going over the maximum recommended open circuit voltage to come into the grow watt inverter. In fact, the operating voltage is supposed to be under 115 volts for the MPPT charge controller, 
And I didn't realize that at the time, so I was way over voltage, and I did notice, you know, that the grow watt would make these crazy noises sometimes, like the fans would ramp up, and if you looked at the PV wattage that was coming in, the input for the solar, it would say 700 watts, and then it would drop down to 200 watts, and it would go up to 400 watts, and it'd be all over the place, and it'd just be making all these noises and stuff, and I thought that was normal, I didn't know any different, but in hindsight, when we got back here a couple of weeks ago, I realized that I had it way over voltage. So what I did is I just disconnected one of those. I now just have these two in series going in, but that's only giving me about 660 watts. I want to double that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run these two in series and those two in series and then connect them in parallel as a parallel string, the two and the two, and that should give us the proper voltage to go into the charge controller without going over voltage, and it'll give us 1,320 watts coming in, which I think will be perfect. do it. Sixty nine volts coming in, eleven hundred watts coming in. Perfect. That's a big upgrade, doubling the solar that's coming in and making sure that it's working effectively and then also doubling the amount of power capacity. When Shannon was in here in the fall, before she left to meet me in Florida, she was having issues keeping this system going. You know, we would get quite a few cloudy days in a row, even just a couple in a row. And then on this solar system here in the tiny house, we're running the Starlink satellite along with the Starlink modem 24-7. She had the fridge going. It's just a small AC fridge, but it was pulling on it 24-7 as well. And then she also was trying to run heat tape overnight for the pipes outside in the pump to try to keep them from freezing while she was here. And all of that, combined with a couple of cloudy days, meant that we were not able to uh, to keep the batteries charged. And I think also the fact that I had the solar not connected properly and had it way over voltage was probably also causing some problems. So hopefully all of this will fix those issues. I owe a huge thank you to Lee Time for working with me on this video and for partnering with me. I would definitely recommend checking them out, guys. I'm gonna put that link in the description below. And like I said, promo code ELEMENT will get you 3% off anything in their store. So far, so good with those batteries. They are working really well, and I will keep you guys posted with the uh, the new upgrades to the system. I will also put links to all the other things that I used in this build, from the GrowWatt inverter to all the wiring and fuses and cutoff switches and bus bars and everything else. So hopefully this will work. I think this is going to be a big upgrade for us. It's going to make things a little bit easier for us off-grid here in the high desert. Thank you guys so much for watching and for following along on this journey. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.